And so we have on the line with us Mr. Hicks Smith from Smith's Ready Mix. Welcome to the show, Smith, Mr. Smith. Good morning, Anna. It's always good to be on the show uh, talking about conservative values and principles. And so I'm glad to be here. What can I do for you? Absolutely. Well, that's at the heart of Conduit. Um, so you own Smith's Ready Mix. And so tell us a little bit about your company and how you got started, you know, all those years ago and what made you successful when you started. Well, the company actually began shortly after World War II when my father got home from the war, uh, actually in 1947. He began business with a bulldozer after having worked for the county to get acquainted with heavy equipment. He went into business uh, serving the farmers of Howard County in a local area with their uh, construction needs for soil and water conservation. He soon joined with his partner, John Howe, a well-known politician at the time who had served as county judge, sheriff, and also in the legislature. And they began a partnership uh, with a bulldozer and started doing dirt work throughout the county. So it's, it began fairly small. And then in 1961, they added a concrete plant to the mix in Nashville. And uh, I, I, be, I had been working uh, with them all, all through the summers. And after on Saturdays, my dad was always uh, good to have a job for me when I got out of school. So I had uh, some experience uh, working with that. And when the concrete business uh, started in 1961, I, I, I seemed to uh, kind of uh, move toward that line of work. Uh, and so uh, that was a, a big, uh, a big uh, news and a big help for me because I was more interested in the concrete business, it seemed like, than, uh, than the other part. But so we've been in business for 72 years here in Southwest Arkansas. Absolutely. So when you came into the company, when you came into this equation, what kind of obstacles um, did you personally face that maybe you weren't ready for, or that you had to learn along the way, you know, those valuable lessons? Well, I came right out of college. I, I went to University of Arkansas and graduated in 1967 with a degree in agricultural engineering. And uh, even though I had worked in the company, I was pretty well familiar with the ongoing activities, it, it was a big change to go right into management. I remember our first job uh, here in Nashville was uh, building the Tyson's uh, processing plant, which was a, a huge endeavor. And it took a, a, a lot of hard work and long hours to produce that job. I, I know uh, there's a lot of days uh, feeling lonely, even though you have uh, help. Uh, you're not always, uh, uh, you don't always have somebody to help with the management part of the company and to give you uh, advice as far as uh, what to do next. You have to pretty well uh, wing it on your own. But the uh, education I had to that point uh, through working for my dad and uh, going to college, it was enough to uh, get, give me the confidence and the ability to get through some of those trying times but some of the obstacles we had was uh, uh, building work uh, big work like we'd never built before getting them employees is always a problem hiring and keeping good employees but uh, many of the things that uh, I had to start with were uh, just just uh, a learning, just a learning curve. It took you. You have to get used to, to being the boss, and you have to get used to understanding that uh, all employees are looking to you for guidance and are the answers. And if you don't have the answers, you got to have access to to, to uh, resources that will give you those answers. And so you usually spend uh, uh, night. Uh, uh, nighttime hours and after hours 
researching uh, uh, what you need to do to answer those questions the next day because they come fast and curious. So I, w I would say that it was uh, somewhat of a shock to uh, be put into a position where you are the authority. <laughs> You're the one that's, that's supposed to know, and they expect you to know. So uh, if you don't have the answer, you need to find it pretty quick. Well, absolutely. So so you mentioned workforce, um, you know, keeping good employees, hiring good employees. What was your experience just with the workforce availability anyways? Because, you know, small business, of course, drives Arkansas's economy, but you got to have the workers to work. Well, a good workforce is vital to the success of a company, and to be able to keep them is, is uh, absolutely necessary. It's hard to do with so many other opportunities in the marketplace. I know uh, uh, we we require uh, CDL licensed drivers. That means the, the driver must must be drug free. He must be uh, 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 trained uh, to drive a truck, and he needs to have some age on him. Uh, you know, uh, we can't uh, company can't grow. It can't even maintain its current operations if it doesn't have good, dedicated helpers or workers to, to help. I uh, was fortunate early on to get some good, dedicated people that stayed with me throughout the years, and they've definitely been uh, uh, a source of my ability to, to expand and grow. Uh, their uh, ability to move with me is, was vital. And so I was uh, fortunate in that I had some core employees that stayed with me, and that was vital to our success, absolutely. Well, I think that's probably a testament to, I'm sure you were a great employer. You know, good employees are going to stick around for a good employer, so I think that's important. Um, so you, you mentioned, you know, it's hard to keep workers just because there's so many more opportunities out there. And, you know, a lot of times it seems like the government wants to create those opportunities to, for people. So as a small business owner, how did the government help you, hurt you, hinder you? Could they have rolled back on regulations? The, the best thing government can do for small business is to get out of the way, uh, which allows the free enterprise market system to work. If that, work, if that is working, the economy is moving in a positive direction, which creates jobs. It creates jobs because small employers and large employers are willing to reinvest in their company and in the marketplace to, to grow. And so that's the key uh, to uh, improvement and success is change. Our economy is built on change. And if we didn't have change, my business would have, wouldn't have never been successful. It's important for business to, to complement or for government to complement business and not uh, uh, regulated to death and impose high taxes on it to keep it from growing. If you if you can just uh, uh, allow small business and, and large business to to uh, do their own operations without interference, they will definitely keep good jobs and provide more employment opportunities for for our our country. Uh, I know the, the, the economy we have right now is exactly what small business and big business needs. It's a, it's a, it's a, we are seeing a relaxation of uh, regulations and rules. We're seeing a lowering of the taxes. We're seeing improvements that, um, that encourages all of us to spend money and to buy more equipment, to buy more services so we can serve our customers better and we can serve more cursed customers. That's the key to uh, to uh, being successful. Customers and, and more of them, good customers. And so the economy that we have right now, the best thing the government can do for business is to get out of the way and allow the economy to grow. And uh, and that, that will uh, that will satisfy, by and large, all, all the needs of business. Now, when the economy is, is held back like it was in the in the Obama years and earlier than that, the Jimmy Carter years, uh, the, the key then was just to hold on. We could, there's no, no thought about growing. Nobody was, we, was reinvesting in the, 
in the economy when Obama was in office, and nobody was when Jimmy Carter was in office when interest rates were 20%. You couldn't afford to. And so uh, the key to uh, to uh, success for business is for the government to get out of the way. Well, absolutely. So now that the government has kind of relaxed a little bit, and you know business is booming what's the future of your company you know you said your dad passed it down to you what happens after you well fortunately i have some children that's been uh, that grew up in the business i have two kids uh that, that are active in the business every day uh they are uh, they, they've been running the business now since uh, 2015 i had a heart surgery in that time and uh they took over the business all of my responsibilities then and they've kept those responsibilities so i've been semi-retired since 2015. so my my two children have uh, I, I have given them stock in the company and when uh, when i'm uh, uh, past uh, uh, usefulness uh, we'll we'll get the rest of the stock in their hands so it'll be theirs uh, when i pass and so i've got uh, i bless that's the, the key to my succession are my two children with their dedication, their determination, and their purpose. Uh, I'm so blessed because of them. Uh, I've told them multiple times how that uh, I would have done much better in business uh, if I had if there been another person, if it two of me uh, along the way because of, uh, of what it takes. Well, there's there's two of me out there now. so. They're, they're doing a great job, and the uh, company is uh, in good hands, and so I have uh, no problems with succession in that regard. Absolutely. Well, I know you sure are proud, and I'm sure that, you know, makes your heart smile that it's continuing on in your family. So I have this, this inkling feeling that you can't sit still in your retirement, and so you have taken up a presence in your county Republican committee. So tell us about that. Well, back during the Obama years, we were uh, trying to figure out something to do politically. I've never been involved in politics uh, in my uh, in my history, but I was compelled then to try to do something. And what we decided, we uh, several others, uh, we all together decided to to, to form a Republican uh, party here in Howard County and start meeting on a regular basis, if nothing more, to just try to keep up with uh, what's happening in our economy and trying to be informed about how to vote. We we, uh, we, we have an awesome responsibility in this country. This democracy or, or uh, this way of uh, government is in our hands, whether we know it or not. It seems like there's not much we can do, but through uh, the local Republican Party, we've been able to get a lot of people excited ab about what they actually can do. And so we're working to improve uh, our standard of living here through the Republican Party. And we're hoping to be able to affect uh, good and change as we go along. You know, uh, uh, these socialistic ideas are anathema to people like me conservative people that's grown up in fear of uh, socialism and, and communism. Uh, I grew up with communism and um, having to be prepared at all times to, to to make, you know, find a place to hide. And so uh, I love, I love uh, the world situation now with us being a leader and being able to uh, exert our freedom loving ideas throughout the world uh, so you know uh, in a small way uh, I've, I've uh, contributed and been a part of a revitalization here in Howard County of the conservative spirit and uh, I, I free, freedom loving ideals and so we're, we're real uh, we're, we're growing every month we've been blessed to have some good speakers and uh, a good good uh, attendance at our meetings. And we've got a very vibrant uh, group here in Nashville. I'm very proud of it. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, it, it's nice that people on your end are looking out for the people on my end. You know, your generation has really stepped up to try to 
protect my generation from ourselves because, you know, you said you used to fear communism. Well, I feared socialism, but yet I live in a world where my generation wants to embrace it. So I think it's very important that, you know, your generation steps in and educates us on the matter. Um, Mr. Smith, it has been an honor to have you on the show, and I thank you for coming on with me while I'm guest hosting. Um, and we'll see you next time. We've enjoyed it very much. Thank you for coming into my home this morning, and and I, I wish you the best. And you're a, you're a wonderful host, and so uh, it's been a pleasure. Have a good day. I sure appreciate that. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> 